Um, now we're going to use the uh, try and uh, catch statements to validate a uh, password uh, input and show error messages uh, on the web page. Okay, so let's create first our inputs. But before we do that, let's uh, just create a paragraph. Okay. Okay, so um, the paragraph is going to be saying your password should contain at least six characters, one number, and one capital letter. Okay. And then we're going to have uh, another paragraph. So this one is going to be enter password, okay, followed by a uh, line break, and then uh, the uh, password input, okay. So we're going to uh, give it an ID password and a type password and another paragraph so this time re-enter um, password and the um, ID is going to be password 2 okay all right Also, uh, we need a uh, button, a submit button. So, um, button, okay. And when we click on the button, we're going to uh, run a function that we will define later. And this function is going to be check. And let's put some text there, submit. Okay, let's see. It is working. Um, okay, so for now, let's just um, comment the uh, previous code that we've done. All right. Okay, now we're going to uh, define the um, function uh, check, which will um, validate the uh, user uh, input. Okay? All right, so, so we're going to use the keyword function then the name is check okay so first of all we're gonna um, declare a couple of variables uh, password and password2 to retrieve the uh, values of the uh, uh, two passwords so first one is password and it's gonna be document gets elements by ID and we're looking at password okay and looking at the value and then the next one is going to be password 2 and we're looking at ID password 2 okay also we're going to define another variable um, error message okay which is going to be the value of the error paragraph the error paragraph itself and then we're gonna access the uh, any HTML uh, later okay so and one last one we need another variable it's gonna be the uh, error that we're gonna be uh, throwing so error to throw so at the moment it's just an empty string all right, now we're going to have our uh, try uh, statement and uh, catch uh, statement. So, okay, so try statement, and then we're going to uh, put the piece of code uh, in the try statement, and then we're going to have a catch statement, and then we'll put the um, other piece of code inside the uh, catch statement, okay? 
All right, so so first thing is the password should include at least uh, six characters. So we're going to be checking the length of the uh, password. Also, we need to check uh, that there is one capital letter and also one number. And finally, we need to make sure that the two passwords, they match. So let's have a look at the uh, first condition of uh, the length of the uh, password. So we're just going to go um, and say something like this. So if the uh, password length is less than six, okay, um, then the um, error to throw, okay, we're going to add to it, first of all, a line break, okay, and we're going to say password to short, okay, so this is the first one, okay, and the other condition is, so we need to make sure that the password has got uh, one capital letter, so we're going to uh, use uh, the uh, uh, test uh, method, okay, and we need the regex here. So, so if so, the regex is going to be forward slash, and then between brackets, capital letter A two capital letter Z, okay, and we're doing a global search, okay, um, and then dot test, and our string here is the password, okay. So if this is false, then we're going to run this piece of code, which is to add to the uh, error to throw. Again, we're going to add something similar to this. And we're just going to say password should include at least one capital letter. Okay, and then the next one is going to be testing whether the password has got at least one digit. It's going to be a similar code. So rather than having this regex, the syntax is going to be uh, backslash um, and small d for uh, digits. Okay, and the message is going to be uh, at least one digit. And finally, we uh, need to um, make sure that the uh, two passwords are the same. So if password is different from password two, okay, then we're going to add to the error to throw. Okay, passwords, they should match. Okay. If we use the uh, throw, error to throw, in one of the codes here, then it will show us only one problem. Okay. So we can try it and see. So let's try it in the first statement. So, throw error to throw we can try it in all the other statements and then inside the catch statement we are going to change the inner HTML of error message to the value that we have thrown okay just bear in mind that this time we are throwing a string okay which is stored inside the variable error to throw and then that string is going to be stored inside the variable err okay so unlike the first example where err was an object because we didn't specify anything to throw so by default err was an object and to get the error message we had to use the message property of the object err 
In our second example, ERR is a string because we are throwing a string. Okay? So if we throw something specifically, then that variable or the value of that variable is going to be stored inside the ERR variable. Okay? So to change the inner HTML of our error message, we're going to use the variable ERR straight away. Okay? All right, let's refresh the page and try a couple of passwords that don't fulfill the conditions, okay? So I'm going to try 111 and 222, okay? So let's click on Submit. So indeed, the password is too short, but we were expecting more than one error, okay? And the reason why we got only the first error, which is password too short, is because when we run the code, once we run a throw statement, then we go out of the try statement. Okay? So we should not have many throw statements like this in our case inside the try statement. So what we're going to do, we are going to delete all these throw statements and have only one throw statement at the end of the try statement. Okay. We're going to place it right here. Okay. So let's save and refresh the page. And this time if we try 111 and then 222 and we submit then we can see all the error messages that we were expecting all right obviously you can build the same application using only if statements but i just wanted to show you an example of how we use the try and catch statements okay